Dear students, through Radio Khaji 90.4 FM, Hum Sab Ka Radio, this is Dr. Samira Sinha, Assistant Professor, Jagannath Nagar College, Ranchi University. Today, I will analyze and elucidate William Wordsworth's poem, Lines Written a Few Miles Above Tintern Abbey, prescribed in semester 4 of English Honours, Core Course, Paper 9, Unit 3. Part 1 of this lecture will introduce you to William Wordsworth and his pantheistic philosophy and to the occasion of writing the poem. The British Romantic poet William Wordsworth in his poem My Heart Leaps Up written in 1802 was inspired by nature and describes the joy that he felt when he saw a rainbow, a feeling which continued throughout his life. He writes, My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began. So is it now I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old or let me die. William Wordsworth was born and bred in the Lake District, a beautiful area of mountains, lakes and streams near the Scottish border of Northwest England. Its natural beauty and grandeur was a major source of inspiration for him in his entire life. It may be observed that Wordsworth's education lay in his constant touch with nature amidst which he travelled variously. William Wordsworth's life spans eight decades between 1770 to 1850. It is considered to be the most eventful period in the annals of English literature. It was during this time that several radical and complex changes took place. Called the Romantic Age, it ushered in, among other things, first, an awakening of imagination, second, the revival of religious individualism as manifested in Methodism, third, a love of nature, fourth, the unique romance of terror, fifth, a love of the Middle Ages, and sixth, a return to the poetic style and technique of Chaucer, Spencer, and Shakespeare. The source of inspiration of this new literary movement lies in the original interpretations given by Wordsworth to the relationship of man and nature. There have been greater poets than Wordsworth, but none more original. So said A.C. Bradley in the Oxford Lectures on Poetry. The prescribed poem is an outcome of Wordsworth's visit to a place called Tintern Abbey. His response and its power of transformation. The complete title of this poem is Lines Composed a Few Miles Above Tintern Abbey on Revisiting the Banks of the Wye During a Tour, July 13, 1798. Tintern Abbey was once a great medieval church located in Monmouthshire, Wales in the valley of the River Wye. The abbey, however, was destroyed during the time of Henry VIII and left in ruins. Wordsworth first visited these ruins while on a walking tour to the Wye Valley in 1793 at the age of 23. He revisited the place, as the poem informs, 
five years later, along with his sister Dorothy. Published in the Lyrical Ballads in 1798, the poem deals essentially with the changes and alterations in perception of the natural landscape after a gap of five years. In other words, although the external surroundings remain the same, the poet's mind sees it differently. Tintin Abbey, therefore, traces the inner transformations of a highly sensitive poetic mind. As is prevalent in all great romantic lyrics, the external beauty of nature provides an impetus to the poet's inner consciousness to deal with his own passions, emotions, reveries and reflections. Lines written a few miles above Tintern Abbey encapsulates the consecrated formulary of Wordsworthian faith with regard to the different aspects of nature, which are, first, joy in nature. In lines written in early spring, Wordsworth writes, And tis my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. In Tintern Abbey he rejoices, O Sylvan Vi, thou wanderer through the woods, how often has my spirit turned to thee. The second aspect, man's relation to nature. The song at the heart of Brahms castle expresses this idea very succinctly, where he writes, Love had he found in huts where poor men lie. Or, as he expresses further in the poem, the tables turned. One impulse from a vernal wood can teach you more of man, of moral evil and of good than all the sages can. In Tintern Abbey, he is well pleased to recognize in nature and the language of the sense, the anchor of my purest thought, the nurse, the guide, the guardian of my heart and soul of all my moral being. The third aspect, as he describes, is mystery of nature. In his poem, To the Cuckoo, Wordsworth says, Shall I call thee bird? No bird, but an invisible thing, a mystery. In Tintern Abbey, he speaks of it in line 93 to 95, and he writes, And I have felt a presence that disturbs me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime. The first, fourth aspect of nature which he deals with is vision. In his famous Ode on Intimations of Immortality, William Wordsworth propounds, Every common sight seemed apparelled in celestial light. In Tintern Abbey, he is aware of a motion and a spirit that impels all thinking things, all objects of all thought, and rolls through all things. Tintern Abbey is a glaring example of the Wordsworthian concept that poetry takes its origin from emotions recollected in tranquility. In fact, by his own admission, not a line of it was altered and not any part of it written down till I reached Bristol. The poem begins with the words, Five years have passed, five summers with the length of five long winters. Notice here the repetition of the fi word five. The repetition here of five thrice. The elongated consonant sound emphasizes to the reader a sense of the long absence from beauteous forms. Wordsworth's two spots of time, the past as it was, and the past as it is in the historical now, and the framework of the description, as Durant points out, at once lends dimensions of space and of time. Two emotional experiences of the same scene 
are recollected here. Wordsworth's meditation on the significance of his life, of both the experiences, five years apart, and of the connection between them provides the structure as well as the subject matter of Tintern Abbey. The first two lines are followed by an image introducing a kinetic element to the poem, that is, dualism of sound and silence, in the line 3, where he writes, These waters rolling from their mountain springs with a soft inland murmur. Notice the contrast between waters rolling and soft inland murmur. What follows is an example of the landscape poetry, a tradition prevalent in the 15th century example, Thompson's poem, Seasons, in which a description of the peaceful landscape and the pastoral farms are given. Here too, we see a description of the beautiful Y Valley, where Wordsworth writes from line 18, pastoral farms green to the very door and wreaths of smoke sent up in silence from among the trees. William Wordsworth was fond of solitude and in his poem The Prelude he calls it best society. Here too, in the closing lines of stanza 1 he says, or some hermit's cave, where by his fire the hermit sits alone. Lines 21 and 22. In his other poem, Sound and Silence, he confesses, Nor do I want a friend in my retreat, to whom I may whisper, solitude is sweet. With this, I end part 1 of this lecture series. In part 2, I shall take up a detailed analysis of the rest of the poem, starting from stanza 2. It is my request that you keep a copy of the poem at hand to take notes for ready reference. Thank you.